Every time I see a Hot Wheels car, I get excited. Even to this day, I can't leave the grocery store without checking out the stack of Hot Wheels at the end of the aisle. I think if you look around the donut office, it's clear. It's just a thing that all car people are still into. Mattel introduced the brightly colored die-cast cars in 1968, and since then, they've become one of the most iconic toys in the entire world, with more than four billion cars produced. How do they decide which cars get made, and how did a failed guitar design lead to literally the best-selling toy in the world? Well, we're about to find out. It's Hot Wheels time, baby. Despite their success with the Barbie doll, the toy that Mattel's grandson loved the most was a car that wasn't even made by their company. By the time Elliot and Ruth Handler even considered making a toy car in the mid 60s, the market was already oversaturated. One of the biggest names they would have to compete with was Matchbox. The British toy car company had been around since 1953 and had a good foothold in the States making 1 64th scale cars like the Ford Zodiac, the Vauxhall Cresta, and various Volkswagens. Matchbox cars sold very well and had many copycats like Corgi, who made really cool European cars like Aston Martins and Triumphs and Carmen Ghias. If Mattel wanted to compete with cars like that, their cars needed to stand out. One way they did that was to paint their cars bright colors. The other toy cars at the time were painted more realistic colors, so flashy purples and pinks would make those cars look drab in comparison. Mattel hired real car designers from Chrysler, GM, and other car companies to draw up their toy cars. The designers made Hot Wheels cars wider and lower than the other toy cars of the time and added sporty mag wheels, which contributed to their hot rod look that further separated them from the competition. But one of the most significant innovations was the wheels. The wheels Mattel chose were fat and wide and made out of plastic, whereas Matchbox wheels were narrow and often made out of metal. Matchbox also used bulky steel axles, which combined with the narrow wheels made the cars roll slowly and wonky like a shopping cart. Mattel understood that kids are inherently chaotic and all they wanted out of a toy car was to make it go fast. Not much changes when you get older, right? Well, the plastic wheels meant less friction and thus more speed. Designers added a slight camber to the wheels to make the cars drive straight, which was where Matchbox cars fell short as well. It was hard to race Matchbox because they would go in different directions. But one of the biggest factors that helped Hot Wheels become better than the competitors actually came from a failed innovation over at Mattel. The company was experimenting in the early 60s, attempting to design a guitar that would never go out of tune. The project was so expensive that they ended up scrapping it, with production now canceled, they had to look for other ways to use this wire. It turned out that the mandolin strings made a much better axle than the steel ones they had been experimenting with. The string was lighter and had smaller contact points, which meant Hot Wheels rolled much faster than cars with steel axles. So they were better. But would the Hot Wheels sell? The first batch of Hot Wheels was released in May of 1968, the Sweet 16 as they're called, and they included many real, albeit tweaked cars like the Camaro, Barracuda, Volkswagen Beetle, and Cadillac Eldorado. They also featured concept cars like the Dodge Diora Surf Van and fully custom cars cooked up by Hot Wheels. When the cars debuted, marketing at Mattel predicted 5 million cars would sell their first year. When they brought Hot Wheels into a meeting with a buyer from Kmart and compared their cars to Matchbox cars, the Matchbook car flew wildly off the track while their car stayed put. Kmart ordered 50 million Hot Wheels on the spot. This was a major success, but to get people coming back and buying their cars, they needed to design more cars. So how do the designers come up with ideas for Hot Wheels? Where do they even start? Every Hot Wheels starts with a sketch. It's been that way ever since 1968. Hot Wheels gives their design team of 17 graphic and automotive designers free reign to create whatever they want. The automotive designers create the body and the graphic designers figure out what to paint and what to graphic. 
that's a technical term. The first part of the process is all done by hand so that ideas that come up during meetings or brainstorm sessions can be integrated easily. After a concept has been solidified, a designer draws up the silhouettes or buckets as they're called internally. Even if the concept has nothing to do with the cars, like a cat, they have to find a way to tie it back into the car culture and make it look in some way like it's a hot rod. And that's how you get something like the perfect speed car. But all Hot Wheels cars are always part of a series, so even the wild ones make sense in the context of that series. The perfect speed car is a part of the Street Beast series which is animals. Once a Hot Wheels concept has been okayed, it gets brought into 3D modeling software to be tweaked. And then it's sent to the modeling shop where it's 3D printed using 35 different resins. Once assembled, the prototype is then put through a bunch of different tests. There are nine tests a Hot Wheels has to go through to make it through production, including various speed tests on the classic orange tracks and one test done called the Side Slam Launcher, which tests vehicle stability. The most important test is how much it hurts when you step on it in the middle of the night. Everything has to be perfect from the weight distribution to the clearance. There's a minimum clearance guideline for Hot Wheels to make sure no part of the car is gonna scrape on a loop or any other track component Hot Wheels makes. So I guess that means they won't be making low car anytime soon. If a car falls short on any of the tests, it is brought back to the drawing board, so to speak, and the design is tweaked until it passes all these tests. The track is almost as iconic as the cars themselves, and they've been around since the beginning. They've seen a lot of updates through the years, one notable upgrade being the supercharger. <laughs> These battery powered modules can be put in the middle of a long track section and use two spinning wheels to blast the car back up to speed. Once the tests are done, the prototype is sent to the Hot Wheels plant in China where they figure out how to produce it. It's broken down into four components, the chassis, the interior, the body, and the windows. Each component is made of different materials, which is part of what makes Hot Wheels so cool. It feels like it's a real model that's been put together and not just a piece of plastic. It takes anywhere from nine to 18 months from initial conception to a Hot Wheels car hitting the shelf and going straight into my grocery basket. Making a completely original car that doesn't exist in real life is one thing, but how does the process differ when they make cars that actually exist? When you make a car that no one has ever seen before, as a designer, you basically have no limits. You can make it as cool or as goofy as you want to, no one's gonna check you, but when you work with established brands with iconic cars that have a reputation to uphold, well, things are a little different. You can't mess those cars up. If you were just to shrink down a car to 1 64th its scale, it would look off. So the designers tweak little things here and there to trick our brains into thinking the proportions look right. They make the wheels bigger and the body wider and flatter. It's kind of like thumbnails on YouTube. I bet a lot of you don't know, but if you see a face on a thumbnail, chances are the person's eyes and mouth have been enlarged. It looks weird if you zoom in, but when it's tiny, like on your phone screen, it looks totally normal. It's the same with Hot Wheels. If you blew up a Hot Wheels car to the size of a normal car, it would look really weird. But for the same reason, it looks great when it's tiny. That's what she said. So the designers of cars like this sick E36 M3 had to scale the car down and accentuate the features while also making it look completely normal, even though the proportions are different. That takes a skilled designer. And that's a major way Hot Wheels differ from Matchbox cars, which keep the same proportions when they're shrunk down. When compared side by side with a Matchbox car of the same model, it's easier to see how different they are. But nowadays, Matchbox is no longer the enemy. Hot Wheels were so successful that Mattel was able to buy out their competition. In 1997, Mattel bought Matchbox from then owners Tyco Toys, and now the company produces both cars. So after 50 years, how does Hot Wheels continue to stay relevant, especially as toy technologies continue to progress? How do they compete with video games? Well, they've been making their own Hot Wheels video games for years now. I'm sure you've played them if you're my age. Starting in 1985 with the release of Hot Wheels on the Commodore 64, they were ahead of many other car racing games by years. Since then, they've made 14 different Hot Wheels video games on countless different platforms. There's that one Hot Wheels game that had the Metallica song. Oh, give me fuel, give me fire, give me double, double, die. <laughs> When they're not making their own games, Hot Wheels cars can be found in other racing games like Gran Turismo, and more recently, Forza Horizon as downloadable content. 
Video games aren't the only thing keeping the company relevant, though. Hot Wheels recently did a collab with rapper Travis Scott. If you haven't seen the video for Gang Gang, I that sounded very white. Our boys Chris Forsberg and Dylan Hughes are doing donuts in it. And the bell of the ball, this 1988 E30 with the Cactus Jack livery. It's a beautiful car and Hot Wheels immortalized it by giving it a limited run of three cars to be given away to some lucky fans. Not gonna lie, a little jealous. Travis Scott isn't the only high profile collaboration Hot Wheels has done though. They made a custom BMW M1 with the anti-social social club, a truck for Supreme, and a collab with shoe company Puma who used some classic Hot Wheels to release custom colorways of their RSX shoe, which sadly does not have anything to do with the Acura RSX. Huge missed opportunity. And if that wasn't enough hashtag thick boy stuff to collect, Hot Wheels has a premium line of cars that has details that normal cars don't have, like big wings, license plates, and more nuanced designs. These things are super sick. And they even have some moving parts like trunks or hoods that open. Some premium lines from last year included a Fast and Furious line, the Car Culture line that has a few golf cars, and my favorite, the Silhouettes. Uh, I've got an R31 and RWB Porsche, it's sick. And the Entertainment line with cars like the Batmobile and a freaking Star Wars van. You know, the van from Star Wars. In addition to mainstream collabs, the company has announced a full-length Hot Wheels movie, question mark? What? Things have come full circle, and now some Hot Wheels originals are being made into full-scale working cars. There's a car that looks like Darth Vader's helmet. Even the orange track got the full-size treatment. Hot Wheels had a tour where drivers would race, do jumps, and even do a full-size loop-de-loop. -loop. Our friend Tanner Faust smashed the world record for jump distance in a Hot Wheels truck at the Indy 500, 332 feet. You're crazy. I think there's something really fun about the fact that they make wild concept cars that would never exist in the real world, but also real cars that you see driving down the road. Sure, these concept cars might look crazy, but maybe there's one or two design elements on them that will make it to a production car. And maybe on a microscopic level, these Hot Wheels drive innovation. My girlfriend's like, why are you always in the Hot Wheels section? You're a 26 year old man. Why do you keep buying Hot Wheels? I don't know, I love these freaking things. What's your favorite Hot Wheel that you had when you were a kid? I think for like my fourth or fifth birthday, where it all started is I got like a pack of like five cars, track that had like, it was just a loop and then a jump at the end. You could clamp the very top of it onto like a table or whatever. Be kind, see you next time.